Thank you, Steve, and thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon for this uh, very important announcement that I am happy to make. When a position comes open, uh, we always develop a profile for our next coach. And uh, in this case, the profile was real simple. Uh, number one, we wanted a, a head coach. Uh, we wanted someone who had been a head coach. Number two, we wanted someone who uh, was a winner, uh, had head coaching experience, but was also a winner. Number three, we wanted someone who had been uh, at a private institution. Uh, there are differences when you're at a private institution uh, versus a public institution, and that experience uh, we wanted. Uh, so we, we uh, established that as a priority. And number four, we wanted someone who we believe would understand the values, the standards, and the ideals of Wake Forest University. And we found that man in Dave Clausen. Uh, and we are here to introduce Dave and his family to you today. Uh, Dave, his uh, wife is Catherine, uh, and their children are Eric and Courtney. So we welcome all of them to Wake Forest University and, and Winston-Salem as well. Dave started his head coaching career at Fordham University uh, a number of years ago. And if you know Fordham University during that time, it was not a football powerhouse. Uh, it was a downtrodden program. I think they had won 22 games in the previous 10 years. Uh, so they had won a little over two games a year, or average two games a year, uh, wins uh, during that time. When Dave took over that program, uh, he, he remained there for five years and quickly established it as one of the 1AA powers in the country. His last two years, he was 10-3 and three and 9-3, and three, uh, won a conference championship at Fordham and was named the National Coach of the Year. Uh, from there, he uh, went to Richmond University and he found the Richmond program to be in a similar position as the Fordham program when he arrived at Fordham. Uh, but at Richmond, he performed the same magic and has quickly established Richmond as a national power uh, and won two conference championships at Richmond uh, and again was named the National Coach of the Year. From there, he went to Bowling Green uh, in the Mid-American Conference and he was at Bowling Green for five years. And during those five years, he turned around that program. Bowling Green, when he went there, was not a strong program in the Mid-American Conference. He leaves that program as a champion. Uh, you probably, the number of you uh, watched the game on Friday evening when Bowling Green won the Mid-American Conference Championship when they beat Northern Illinois, 47 to 27, and Northern Illinois was ranked number 16 in the country at that time. There are some consistencies in Dave's head coaching experience. Uh, number one, he's won at least 10 games at, in a year uh, at every institution, Fordham, Richmond, and Bowling Green. And at every institution, he's won a conference championship. But at Wake Forest, it goes beyond that. Uh, we need a coach who is not only a winner, we need a coach who understands Wake Forest and understands the importance of the other areas of importance at Wake Forest, and that is the academic area. And if you look at his academic accomplishments, they are equally impressive. Whether it be any metric that you uh, use, his metrics and results are outstanding. Whether it be the APR, the graduation rates, uh, any metric, great, uh, team GPA, all of them escalated dramatically under his tutelage. We have a winner uh, leading our program now at Wake Forest University in Dave Clawson, and I am pleased to introduce him to you as our head football coach. Dave? Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I, I just want to say I am uh, absolutely thrilled, honored, and humbled uh, to be the new head football coach at, at Wake Forest University. Um, you know, the opportunity to coach at a, a nationally recognized, uh, prestigious academic school has a beautiful campus. Uh, we're in a great conference. We have a beautiful stadium. And, and the opportunity to live in such a beautiful part of the country is, is truly a, a dream come true. Uh, just with the process, I really want to thank uh, Dr. Hatch. I want to thank Ron Wellman uh, just for their professionalism through the search. Um, initially this job came open. We were in the middle of preparation for the, the Mid-America Conference Championship game and they were extremely respectful of uh, the position we were in at Bowling Green, um, wanting to wait till after the game was over, till we had any discussions and I just felt that was the right thing to do. I, I owed the people at Bowling Green and our football team there the focus on winning the championship 
and then even after the game was over, we were going to meet the next day, and, and they allowed me to have another day and enjoy the win and give me time to prepare. Uh, I also want to thank Mike Buddy, who was uh, part of the interview process. Uh, he was uh, blessed and got to listen to 14 hours of football philosophy at our kitchen table. How he stayed awake, I don't know, but he learned more about football than he'd probably ever want to. And um, again, he was uh, very much a part of the process of wanting to come here. Um, when the position opened, I, I was really hoping that, that I could be a candidate for it. Um, I think this is a special place. I think it's a special institution. And um, again, I'm very lucky uh, to be able to be the head football coach here. But another part of this process uh, that was important is just spending the time with Ron and, and certainly talking to people about his reputation in the field. Um, he, he is respected as one of the very best athletic directors in the country. Uh, everybody who ever knows Ron or had worked with Ron, uh, the terms trustworthy, um, you know, a straight shooter, reliable, dependable, all those things that create a great working relationship and allow you to build a championship culture just came up, up again with, with Ron. And uh, that is one of the attractions to, to Wake Forest, is the ability to learn and work with an athletic director that has the reputation of Ron Wellman. So I, I really look forward to developing my relationship with him. I know there's a lot uh, that he'll be able to teach me, uh, not just about the institution, but college athletics. And um, again, I, I really look forward to that. Um, I also r really, and, and this is important, I, I really need to thank uh, Bowling Green State University. Um, the five years that we were able to spend there as a family was, uh, it was awesome. Um, you know, I want to thank Carol Cartwright and, and Greg Christopher, the president and the athletic director that hired me and uh, believed in our vision for the program even when the, the results weren't immediate. Uh, our new president, Mary Ellen Maisie, was as supportive as a president can be. Our new athletic director, Chris Kingston, uh, we developed a very quick friendship and is going to do a great job there. The donors, the fans, the staff were nothing short of wonderful to us during our whole time there. And, uh, it, and this is not a matter of wanting to leave a place, it's really wanting to come to a place. And, and I really need to thank the players at Bowling Green. Um, we had a group of guys that bought in and did everything we asked and were able to win the first conference championship there in, in 21 years. And I'm extremely grateful to all of them. Uh, I had a meeting with them today before we left and, and that was an emotional meeting. And uh, again, I'm extremely excited about the opportunity to come here, uh, but it was gut-wrenching and, and heartbreaking uh, to leave a group of players that I just fell in love with uh, over the past five years. Uh, I also really want to thank my family. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is a hard profession on families, and I'm very fortunate that I have a, a great partner, um, my best friend, the love of my life, my wife, Catherine, that is extremely supportive uh, of what we do. And I have two wonderful children in Courtney and Eric. Um, Courtney, after meeting Mr. Wellman, got up the next morning and said, if they offer you the job, I'm okay if you take this one. <laughs> and, and that was an important part of the process. It's also very neat to be able to share a moment like this with your parents, Ron and Sue Clausen, who are here. Uh, my entire family lives in the Charlotte area, so it's, it's very exciting uh, for me to be close to family again. And, uh, and I also want to acknowledge uh, Coach Grobe, um, that certainly in, in building the program at Richmond, one of the people I stole from was Coach Grobe. Uh, he proved that Wake Forest can win at a very high level in the Atlantic Coast Con Conference. Um, you know, he did it with class, he did it with dignity. Uh, it was certainly one of the most respected coaches in the profession, and, and certainly replacing a man of his stature is a responsibility I don't take lightly. He, he's uh, one of the truly class gentlemen in the coaching profession, and at some point I, I hope I have the opportunity to visit with Coach Grobe. Um, like Coach Grobe, I, I really hope that I can make uh, Wake Forest University, the students, the faculty, uh, and the community very proud of Wake Forest football. That's a goal of ours, not just on the field, but off the field as well. Uh, we will have standards in our program. We'll have standards uh, in the classroom, outside the classroom, and on the football field. And I know if our players strive for those standards, uh, our vision is to win championships here. Uh, I think a lot of times people say, 
you know, what is your goal? I think if you set your goal anything lower than being a champion, uh, that you're setting the standard too low. So our goal is to be champions. We know it's going to take a lot of work. We're going to have to get the right people on board, whether it's our staff, our recruiting efforts, but I believe wholeheartedly that can be done at Wake Forest and we will work relentlessly to that goal until it's accomplished. Um, I had a chance earlier today to meet the team and, and that was an impressive meeting. It was a very uh, attentive group, uh, an impressive group, and, and I can't wait to get back here when they get back on, uh, on campus in January and move the program forward. Um, when you hire a, a head football coach, there's press conferences and you dress in a suit and you meet a lot of different people, but the heart and soul of the football program is the players. And the part of the job that I enjoy the most is working with them and getting to know them and creating those relationships. And, and it can't happen fast enough if we want to move this forward. Uh, I feel this is a great opportunity. If you look at college football on a national scale, there are a lot of great academic schools that play high-level football. Uh, Stanford, uh, Northwestern has had a lot of success, Vanderbilt, that you can combine great academics and be a great football program. The academics cannot be an excuse to not succeed. To me, it's a reason we will succeed. Okay, And there is no reason that Wake Forest can't reach great heights as other great academic schools in this country have done. And I can't wait to get out and sell Wake Forest football to recruits uh, through North Carolina. Uh, I'm really excited to, to reconnect with the coaches in this state. This was a, a very big recruiting area for us when I was at Richmond. It's, it's well coached football. There's a lot of good players and throughout the Southeast. So again, I really look forward to rolling up my sleeves, going to work, and making the Demon Deacons champions once again. And I would be happy to field any questions you have. Coach, um, I know it's really in the process, but are you bringing your entire staff with you here, or part of your staff, or have you made that decision yet? There, there will be uh, there will be some coaches that will be joining our staff uh, that were with me at, at Bowling Green. Uh, there might be some coaches presently on the staff at Wake Forest that are retained, and there might be people that. Uh, fill other needs that we have as a program. Um, you know, the, the goal is to hire the very best staff that we can for Wake Forest University so we can compete for ACC championships. And uh, wherever those coaches come from, uh, but that'll be a process and, and just be patient. That probably the most important decisions that I make as a head coach are over the next two to three weeks of who we hire. Who's going to recruit these young men, who's going to coach with them, who's going to mentor them. And um, I'd rather take my time and get it right than rush and, and make bad decisions. How much is that playing a factor, especially the recruits that are on the fence to coming to Wake Forest right now, and maybe some of them may be attached to some of the coaching staff or whatnot? How much is that playing a factor to the recruits right now? Well, you, you want to hold on to the recruits, but uh, you know, to, to hire or retain a coach just because he's going to keep one recruit, I think, is, uh, isn't long-term thinking. That we have to hire the, the best coaches for Wake Forest. Mm -hmm that share a vision of how we want to run this program, what we want this program to look like, and if we do that, that'll attract the right players here. So, you know, we're going to try to hold on to the recruits we have. Uh, I'm sure they're being recruited by other institutions right now, and that's a battle we're going to have to fight in the next, uh, in the next six weeks. But, you know, I won't let uh, one recruit dictate who a staff member is. Obviously, every every situation is unique, but is there a common thread, a common theme to the, the building projects that you have done along the way that you can you know, employ here? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, first off, uh, when I first got the job at, at Fordham, I was 31 years old. I was the youngest Division One coach in the country, and Ra described how bad the program was. If possible, I made it worse. You know, I mean, it was a young head coach, and I made a lot of mistakes. Um, but yeah, I, I think it all begins with getting the right people on board. Uh, it's having a shared vision of what you want the program to look like. It's getting players to buy in uh, to the commitment level it takes to become a good football team. And it's not a snap the fingers and it happens. Um, but you have to have players that buy into every aspect of the program. That They're going to go to class. They're going to do the right things off the field but they love football. It is really hard to be a championship football program if you don't surround yourself with players who love football, that are willing to do extra, spend extra time in the weight room, the film room, 
uh, the sport is just too hard that if you don't love it, it's hard to succeed at it. And uh, go ahead. I was going to say, as these things go, how does this compare to some of your other fixer-upper opportunities? You know what? I don't know. Uh, to me, I'll, I'll get a much better feeling for that when we see the players in the off-season program. Um, Again, I, I have uh, great respect for the head coach here, and I'm sure this team has a, a great work ethic. So my expectation is that these guys are hard workers and they love football. And if that's the case, it can be, it can be faster. You, you never want to set a timetable on anything. We want to win as many games as we can, as soon as we can. But in doing that, we're not going to cheat the process of doing things the right way or cutting corners or, or turning our eyes to things that aren't right in the program. Uh, every program, even at uh, Bowling Green where we won a championship, we have things that aren't the way we need them to be, and that's just coaching college football. There's always problems you got to fix. Is it your desire to bring all three coordinators down from Bowling Green, and how confident are you that that might take place? Um, yeah, I, I, would, I would like to bring all three coordinators. One of them may be a candidate for the head coaching job there, and uh, I certainly want to support our staff if that's something he wants to pursue. Um, but uh, you know the, the plan is to get the offense and defensive coordinator down here relatively quickly to help with recruiting, and then we'll start filling the staff from there. With recruiting getting late in the process now, we're in, in the December, well in the December, and with a dead period coming up, is that going to pose some extra problems for you as far as getting on a recruiting? Yeah, there, there's no question. I mean, it's uh, we have another half a week that we can have face-to-face -face contact and, and right now we don't have a coaching staff. Uh, it's not ideal but that's just the, the timing of coaching changes. Any staff that ever undergoes a coaching change that's an obstacle especially with the new recruiting rules because now there's a whole month and you're only allowed the, the one phone call a week during that period so but it is what it is. Those are the rules. We're going to follow the rules here and um, you know, we'll make every effort we can, and you're allowed to email people and, and do other things. And uh, you know, we're, we're going to work like crazy to put the best class we can together. And you know, we're not going to sign a player just for the sake of signing them. You know, there's got to be a standard that we need to feel that this player can help us win and win at a high level. And uh, you know, if we can't find a, a player of the caliber of that, we can save the scholarship and, and wait a year. But again, we, we want to go out there and secure the commitments we have. You talked about your uh, your time down here when you were with Richmond um, and the recruiting in the state of North Carolina. Are you looking forward to the challenge of, of going up against three other ACC schools in this state alone? And with a lot of people seeing Wake Forest kind of at the bottom of those four, that challenge. Nah, I see Wake Forest at the top of the four. Yeah. So that's how we. That's the vision that we have for mm -hmm. this program, and we'll find people that that share that vision. And um, w we want to do a great job in state. We really do, um, but. You can't drop your standard to just take somebody that's in state. But we're going to go after the, the best players in the state, and we're going to fight those battles and, and win as many of them as we can. And I just think you have to do that when you run a, a college program. You need to create relationships in the backyard. You have to have high school coaches that trust you with their players. And, and certainly at our time at Richmond, this was an area that we recruited pretty heavily, um, and we had some outstanding players come from North Carolina. And uh, again, it's a very good football here, and it's well coached. And I, I look forward to reconnecting with, with the coaches in the area. Coach, what was the message to the players when you met with them this afternoon? And what tone were you trying to set in that meeting? Well, the, the tone I set is that I really wanted this job. I, I want to be at Wake Forest. Uh, the second that this job opened, it was I was dreaming that I'd be at a podium speaking with uh, all these reporters. Um, I mean, I, I want to be here. This is, uh, it, this is a great place, and I think we can achieve great things. Um, you know, and, and the other message was that uh, it's a place that there's high standards with everything we do. Uh, we expect to be successful in football, and we expect them to be successful in the classroom. And, and this is a place that the, the school is difficult, and the work is hard, but the reward for doing it is great at the end and it's going to be same, the same with the football. If you put the work into it and you love it, there'll be a great reward at the end of it. And it was, a, I thought, a really positive meeting. And what I really liked is how interactive they were. A lot of times in those meetings you say any questions and the room goes dead. Uh, to me, they were engaged. And uh, you can tell that they love Wake Forest and they have tremendous pride in their institution. And, and that's a great place to start.
Now, how well they run and how strong they are, we'll, we'll find that out in the next few months because that's important too. You experienced high-level football the one season in Tennessee. What did you learn there in the SEC, Dave, and uh, how do you think it might be helpful? Well, the, the thing that I learned there that was very valuable is just the recruiting. Uh, recruiting at this level um, is a lot different than recruiting at Richmond or even in the MAC. Uh, the pace of it, the aggressiveness of it, the amount of schools that you have to beat on a good player, ways that you got to create an edge. Um, it is, you, it's much more aggressive uh, and you got to have a plan. And, uh, and so that was very beneficial. And, and certainly, um, you know, we, we uh, had a great class put together at Tennessee uh, before we were let go. And there, we had a lot of outstanding players. Uh, you know, we had two outstanding quarterbacks committed. And uh, I was very involved in that process. And it, it, again, that, that was a lot different than what I experienced at Richmond or, or what we did at Bowling Green. Is it important not only that you've been in a place like Richmond, but that you attended a place like Williams? Yeah, yeah I, mean, I think I've, uh, I've worked at a lot of different type of institutions. But certainly, um, when you've worked at a place uh, like Richmond, or you, you, you attend to go to a place like Williams, you understand the demands on these student athletes. Uh, and again, I was a Division III player. I would have loved to come to Wake Forest. They had zero interest in me back in 1984. So they, they, they made a wise recruiting decision there. But uh, yeah, I mean, at Richmond, we expected those guys to perform at a high level, and they did. I and mean, we had seven or eight NFL players on my last roster there. Some of those guys are, are still playing. Um, but we also expected those guys to be successful in the classroom. And it was a, a small uh, private school. It was demanding. The work wasn't easy. They had to go to class. And you could be successful doing both. And, and that's the same vision that we have here. Other than wanting just to win games and be the best that you can possibly be, win championships, what kind of culture do you envision building at White Forest? What kind of football culture do you see that you can build here? Because you say this is a special place, and I think a lot of your players will tell you that that you're inheriting now, but what do you want to build as far as the culture of the program itself, the culture of the community? Well, first of all, the, the culture in the program is I want those guys to look forward to come to the football office and the football facility every day. It, it can't be something they dread or don't look forward to. Uh, they're still 18 to 22 year old uh, young men. It's got to be fun. They have to enjoy it. They have to look forward to it. They have to feel every day they come to the weight room or every day they come to the practice field that they are leaving a better football player. And, and that creates morale. If they feel they're getting better, that helps morale. And winning helps morale. And uh, it is what it is. I mean, this is Division I ACC competitive football. You need to win football games. and, and I think when you create the culture that you have good character in your football team and good character in your locker room and they understand the values of academics is important, the way they conduct themselves outside the field is important, and football is really important. Those are the three things that I think create the culture. And then it's older players getting young players to buy into that culture. And, and sometimes that takes time to establish. Um, but I, I just left the program that the culture the last year was as good as anywhere I've ever been. I mean, those guys enjoyed playing football. They enjoyed practicing football. And, and they had fun doing it. And I think that's a reason why you win. If they enjoy what they do, they're doing, you're probably going to be successful. If it's drudgery and it, it feels like work, it's hard to win games. Any other questions for Coach Clawson? Thank you very much. Right, and. Uh, I, I really look forward to working with all of you and uh, to the students at Wake Forest. One of my best friend from high school attended Wake Forest and he said make sure you finish off your uh, press conference by telling them that you want to roll the quad. So we look forward to rolling the quad many times here. Thank you very much. Go right this way. Thanks.